Council members, please take your seats. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of June 26, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Every Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. <laughs> Eugene. I'm going to Disney World with my son Gibson. I'm very excited. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Holden. Here. Here. Kalos. King. Thank you. Thank you. So glad Koo. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Lander. Levin, Levine, Morelli, Lewis, Mizell, Menchaca, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Present. Moya, Powers, Reynoso, Richards, Present. Rivera, Rodriguez, Rose, Present, Rosenthal, Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. Ballone. Espinal. Powers. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Peter Jose Vargas of the Church of God of 6th Street, which is located at 636 East 6th Street in Manhattan. Dios, creador del cielo y la tierra y todo el universo, reconocemos tu presencia y poder en nuestros medios. Te damos gracias por el regalo de la vida y por mujeres y hombres que dedican su vida al servicio público y que dirigen su labor hacia los más necesitados. Entre ellos, damos gracias, oh Dios, por el presidente de este cuerpo legislativo, Corey Johnson, Lauren Combo, Carolina Rivera, mi concejal Distrito 2, y cada concejal los cuales se esfuerzan 
por el bienestar de esta ciudad, Dios de gracia, que les dé a ellos protección divina, la sabiduría necesaria, ánimo y toda fuerza necesaria para cumplir el mandato otorgado a ellos. También te rogamos por todas organizaciones aquí representadas y todas que también luchan por nuestras comunidades, en particular aquellos que se esforzaron para aliviar el dolor, supieron las necesidades de la isla borinqueña Puerto Rico. Que Dios bendiga a todos los puertorriqueños. Y por último, oh Dios, te rogamos por nuestra bella ciudad, por cada raza, cultura, comunidad de fe y cada vecindario, que seamos uno como tú lo eres, Dios. Une nuestros esfuerzos, nuestros pensar, para que juntos alcancemos lograr la justicia para todos, que siempre reine tu amor en nuestras vidas y corazones. Oremos en tu nombre poderoso. Amén. Amén. Gracias, Pastor Vargas. I'd now like to ask Councilmember Rivera to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for the opportunity to welcome the Reverend Jose Vargas from Iglesia de Dios on East 7th Street. Many in my community affectionately know him as Pastor Cheo. <laughs> Reverend Vargas moved to the Lower East Side at the age of 17 from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, an area from which many in my community and my own family are from. This was also one of the areas severely impacted by the 2017 hurricane. The Reverend has lived on East 10th Street ever since he came to New York City. He has spent decades developing a network of neighbors that provide support to members of the community in need. After pursuing his ministerial calling informally for many years, he sought his accreditation and ordination beginning in 2013 by the bishops of the Iglesias de Dios, a coalition of faith-based Latino clergy. He is currently based in the heart of Loisaida, where so many of us and those from the greater New York area seek spiritual guidance and refuge. He works to expand connections with and opportunities for young people especially, and provides care, food, and activities to area seniors. He's also the chaplain of PSA 4 precinct in my district. In his invocation, Chael mentions public service being a commitment that must be inclusive. And I'm thankful to all of you, my colleagues and the people in this chamber, for recognizing that Spanish is one of the many beautiful languages of this city. He is a pastor of all people, offering blessings and good wishes to so many, whether at his church, the local block party, or when you bump into him in the street, which I have from Avenue B to Union Square Park. In connection with the proclamations presented today to organizations assisting climate refugees from Puerto Rico in the wake of Hurricane Maria, I want to highlight Reverend Vargas's work in joining with local churches and the Ninth Precinct on food and supply drives to the island in the months following the event. Also for his delivery, which he presented personally of toys he collected for impoverished children in Aguadilla, porque sabemos que Puerto Rico se levanta. I am proud to have Cheo as a constituent and a friend, and I am thankful to all of you. And Cheo, muchas gracias. And with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. And thank you again, Pastor Vargas, for all your service to our community. It's very impressive to learn more about the work that you are doing, both here and in Puerto Rico. I now make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of May 8th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. Excuse me. Excuse me, M175 submitting Jeffrey Roth for appointment to the TLC. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to thank everyone for being with us on this Wednesday with the budget successfully behind us. We have an agenda full of legislative items to get through. But before we get started, I would like to remember 
FDNY Lieutenant John Moran, who passed away last week from cancer. He served the city, our city, his city, for more than 20 years, including through rescue and recovery efforts at Ground Zero. I also would like all of us to please keep retired NYPD detective Luis Alvarez, who recently testified in front of Congress, in your thoughts. He joined other first responders to advocate on behalf of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund earlier this month, despite having gone through nearly 70 rounds of chemotherapy. 70 rounds of chemotherapy. And he has now, sadly, entered hospice care. Following his incredibly moving testimony, we've heard just this week that there may finally be some agreement to reauthorize the Victims' Compensation Fund soon. All of us urge the Congress to act. Lou and other heroes of 9-11 deserve this and they deserve so much more. Let's do the right thing. Let's take care of these heroes. Let's make sure they don't have to be re-traumatized every time this conversation has to happen. Let's authorize this bill for perpetuity so that these heroes and their families are able to get the proper medical care and treatment that they need after they've given so much to us on one of the darkest days in American history. I now ask all of us to rise and take a moment of silence for Lieutenant FDNY Lieutenant John Moran and to keep NYPD Detective Luis Alvarez in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. I also want to take a moment for a few staff announcements. We are very sadly, I'm actually very sad, uh, to say goodbye to two incredibly important members of our city council team. The first is someone who I just, is he here? He's here. Someone who I just have the deepest affection for. Kevin Groh has been with me since my campaign in 2017, and he joined our press department and communications team as the city council's digital director. Everything you see on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook, promoting the work of the members here and the hearings and the work we do every single day, highlighting the bills, Kevin has done that work for the last year and a half he is an amazing, amazing person. I am going to miss his talent and digital know-how, but uh, I'm really happy for him because uh, he is just such a special person. And he is um, moving to Iowa to work for Mayor Pete on a presidential campaign. He's going to be the field director, the organizing director for the entire state of Iowa in a presidential race, which is a big deal. I am very sad to lose him, but I am very, very happy for him. He uh, is just someone who was there for me every single day when I was running for speaker, and I, um, I'm really sad that he's going. I tried to convince him to stay, but I was unsuccessful, but I'm really, really happy for him. So I wanna uh, say, Kevin, I love you. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you so much. And next is someone who we all know, and we had a fabulous uh, retirement party for her yesterday. Someone who is a friend and a constituent, someone who I knew long before I ran for city council.
So I want to. We are about to say goodbye to someone, and I would love just a moment to recognize an individual's many years to the city council. So if we could not have an interruption while we honor someone who has given so much to this institution and to our city, I would appreciate that. And if we have another interruption, I don't want to have to clear the balcony, but we're going to have to because we have a lot of work to get through today. So again, uh, we had a great retirement party yesterday for an incredible, incredible person, someone who has served this council for 17 years. She has served under four speakers. She has orchestrated hundreds, if not thousands, of events. Christine McLaughlin, the amazing director of events and correspondence services, someone who we all love so much. Where is she? We love Christine McLaughlin. Thank you, Christine, for everything. OK, now let's dive into our agenda, uh, starting with land use items. Today, we're going to vote on the Bay Street neighborhood rezoning on the north shore of Staten Island. In addition to securing uh, 1,800 affordable housing units, Councilmember Debbie Rose engaged in tough negotiations with the administration to secure two new schools, the reconstruction of the Cromwell Center, upgrades to several parks, front funding from the Department of Environmental Protection, and much more. I know she has worked very hard on this one, so I want to congratulate her, and I know that she will have more to say later on this rezoning. We're going to vote on 2 Howard Avenue in Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuels District, Brook 156 in Land Use Chair Rafael Salamanca's District, the Court Square Text Amendment in Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer's District, Haven Green Senior Housing in Councilmember Margaret Jin's District. And I know this was a tough one, but I understand we've made significant progress on the open space concerns that were raised throughout the process. I know how much the Elizabeth Garden means to the community. Uh, and I know how hard Councilmember Chin has worked on this. We have been working with the DeMattis organization, and we have a letter of intent from the adjacent building owner to the south to work to combine their existing 14,000 square feet of courtyard space with new space on the site with the senior affordable housing. And I want to congratulate Councilmember Chin. I know she has spent a long time on this. Together, the two open spaces would be over 20,000 square feet. They also agreed to work with HPD to keep their building as affordable housing. And I want to thank them for this commitment and for being good neighbors in the community. And I look forward to continuing to work together with them and with Margaret on this. A big thanks to our land use team who worked with both Margaret and Debbie and all the other applications. John Douglas, Arthur Ha, Rosa Kelly, Chelsea Kelly, uh, Amy Levitin, and of course, Raju Mann. Moving on, the council will be voting on the following pieces of legislation. First, we have two bills from Minority Leader Stephen Matteo related to AEDs. Introduction 1009A will require the Department of Parks and Recreation to provide an automated external defibrillator at every large swimming pool facility under its jurisdiction and require that at least one parks employee be trained to use an AED, that they be present during all hours of pool operation. Next is introduction 1042A, again by Minority Leader Matteo, and it will permit the Department of Citywide Administrative Services and the Department of Parks and Recreation to distribute extra, any extra automated external defibrillators they have to additional youth sports leagues after they have first fulfilled their obligation to provide AEDs to youth baseball and softball leagues. I want to thank the staff that worked on this, Chris Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. Uh, next, we have two important pieces related to climate and the environment. 
Council member and chair of our Environmental Protection Committee, Costa Constantinides, has put forward Introduction 1619, which would make several technical and clarifying amendments to Local Law 97 of 2019. That was our historic Climate Mobilization Act, which Chair Constantinides had worked on for years. And this is a cleanup bill, and I want to thank Nicole Aben for her work on that. And next is Resolution 864A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos which would declare an emergency, a climate emergency, and it calls for accelerated actions to address the full range of ecological threats we are facing. San Francisco and other cities around the world have already issued climate emergency declarations, and New York City joins those cities today. I want to thank the staff that worked on this, Nadia Johnson, Ricky Chawla, and Samara Swanson. Next is Introduction 5B by Councilmember Inez Barron, which would require that restaurants in New York City display information messaging on healthy eating for individuals with diet-related conditions, including but not limited to diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension. And I want to thank the staff, Sarah Liss, Z Emanuel Halu, Emily Balkin, and Smita Deshmukh. Introduction 1331B by Councilmember Richie Torres, who's the chair of our Oversight and Investigations Committee, will require the Department of Investigation to issue an annual report to the City Council on the total overtime hours recorded and the total overtime paid to NYCHA employees for the prior calendar year. The bill would also direct DOI to issue an annual report to the City Council on any small procurement contracts as defined by NYCHA procurement rules awarded during the prior year, including an analysis regarding whether any housing development may have been awarded small procurement contracts to avoid compliance with NYCHA procurement rules. I want to thank uh, and congratulate Councilmember Torres on this and thank the staff, Daniel Collins. Next, we have Introduction 1549 by Councilmember Francisco Moya, which will rename 126th Street between Northern Boulevard and Roosevelt Avenue in Queens, Seaver Way, and amend the official city map accordingly. Tom Seaver was a Hall of Fame baseball pitcher who played 20 seasons in Major League Baseball, 12 for the Mets. He was one of only two pitchers in the history of baseball to have 300 wins, 3,000 strikeouts, and a career ERA of under 3.0. He was an instrumental member of the Mets' victory over the Orioles in the 1969 World Series, where he pitched a one-run, 10-inning complete game to put the Mets up 3-1 to one in the series. Tom Seaver embodies the spirit of the amazing 69 Mets, which is a team that means so much to our city, and I'm proud we are doing this today. I want to congratulate Francisco on this, even though he is a soccer fan. We love soccer, too. And I want to congratulate the staff, Chris Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. Lastly, we have a package of bills related to protections and services for transgender, gender nonconforming, non-binary, and intersex individuals who are involved in the justice system. I would be happy to advance this package, of course, at any time, but it is particularly meaningful to do this during Pride Month and in the lead up to the parade in March this Sunday. Transgender, gender nonconforming, non-binary, and intersex individuals face some of the greatest challenges when involved in the criminal justice system, and these bills seek to address some of these systemic problems. I would be remiss if we did not mention Laylene Polanco, who, as you heard from some of the folks who are here today, tragically, sadly, passed away earlier this month in Rikers. Laylene never should have been on Rikers to begin with. Her story is one which shows the deep flaws of our criminal justice system. She never should have been on Rikers Island. She should not have been in solitary confinement. This never should have happened. And this is a huge tragedy. I want to thank Rosa Goldenson from the city for her amazing coverage and reporting uh, on this. And this is why I support closing Rikers Island and moving away from Rikers Island. We lost Laileen, but we are trying, attempting to take serious steps to protect members of the trans community as well as other gender nonconforming, non-binary, and intersex individuals. Introduction 1535A is sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, and it will require that the Board of Corrections convene a task force composed of representatives of the Department of Corrections, the Mayor's Office to End Domestic and Gender-Based Violence, NYC Unity, Correctional Health Services, 
formerly incarcerated individuals, local service providers, local and national experts on transgender, gender nonconforming, non-binary, and intersex policy, and people who were formerly incarcerated in the transgender housing unit at Rikers to the extent practicable. The task force would be responsible for publishing yearly reports containing recommendations on DOC policies regarding TGNC, NB, and intersex individuals. Councilmember Diane Ayala has put forward two related bills. Introduction 1513A would ensure that individuals in the transgender housing unit not only have the same access to mental health treatment as do individuals housed elsewhere, but also that all professionals treating individuals who are transgender or non-binary or intersex have specialized training in transgender and gender affirming care. Introduction 1514A will require that those housed in the transgender housing unit be afforded the same access to substance use treatment that those housed outside the unit receive. Passage of these bills will ensure that transgender individuals don't have to choose between receiving appropriate substance use treatment and living in the transgender housing unit. Finally, introduction 1530A, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, will require the Department of Correction to issue incident level reports to the City Council and to the Board of Correction on housing requests made related to gender identity on a biannual basis and to issue an aggregate report to the public on an annual basis. This legislation will bring greater transparency into the application and appeals process for those who seek housing within the DOC and that, to ensure the DOC is responsive to those uh, who are seeking this housing and responsive to their gender identity. I want to thank the staff for all these DOC bills. I want to thank Alana Sivan and Max Camp for Williams. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We'll now call on Council Member Margaret Chin. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, thank you, Speaker Johnson, for providing me with this opportunity to talk about an application known as Haven Green to create over 100 units, more than 100 units of senior housing in my council district. The path to this final vote has been a long one. For decades, this site in Little Italy has been promised as the future home for affordable housing. With this vote, our city is finally delivering on that promise. This project will create over 100 units of deeply affordable housing for elderly New Yorkers, including members of our city's LGBTQ community and the homeless seniors. Recognizing the community's need for open space, more than 6,000 square feet of publicly accessible space was included in the plan. Today, I'm proud of our effort to secure even more open space, which the speaker talked about, which would include an agreement with the adjacent building owner to add thousands more square feet to this project. And as part of this agreement, 152 units of Section 8 affordable apartment at this neighboring building will remain affordable. Taken together, these gains add even more benefit to an already strong application that addresses both the urgent need for affordable housing and open space for the neighborhood. You know, this project has inflamed passion on both sides. However, I believe that no matter where you stand on this particular application, all of us want what's best for our neighborhood. Our city will need the passion and commitment shown by both sides of this issue if we are to address the affordability crisis that is leaving too many New Yorkers behind. This collective effort is what we mean when we talk about housing justice for all. This is what we mean when we talk about building <coughs> communities that welcome all New Yorkers regardless of their socioeconomic status, background, or identity. This is what we mean when we talk about doing what's the right thing for those most in need. That includes homeless seniors Thank you so and the much, LGBTQ seniors of the Stonewall generation who fought for civil rights that we are celebrating Pride this month. Um, I wanted to thank Land Use Chair, Chair Salamanca, Chair Adam for host, you know, for chairing that long hearing, and uh, the Land Use staff, especially Raju Mann, helping with this negotiation, and all the 
supporters, all the seniors who are here, Coalition of Supporter for Affordable Housing. Thank you. This has been, you know, a long fight. And I asked my colleague to really think about the affordable crisis, do the right thing, and vote in support. Thank you. Thank you. Hard to contain the passion of Councilmember Chin. We'll now move on to Minority Leader Matteo. Thank you. Today we are voting on two bills that, in my view, are capstones to a multi-year effort to expand access to automated external defibrillators, or AEDs, intros 1099A and 1042A. Building on the successes of our predecessors, uh, Speaker Quinn and Borough President Otto, the Speaker and I, during his tenure as Health Committee Chair, passed landmark legislation that brought AEDs to the most at-risk users of our city's field, youth baseball players. We have since expanded that mandate to youth softball and are now through intro 1042A, giving parks the ability to use this proven AD distribution program for all youth sports as resources may allow. Additionally, during our hearings last year, we learned that our city-owned pools are also vulnerable spaces. Whilst many city pools have AEDs on site, they are often located where they cannot be assessed immediately. This bill will remedy that. Intro 1009A closes the loop on having AEDs in our city's recreational spaces and will undoubtedly save lives in the future. I want to thank the speaker um, for his partnership uh, when he was the chair of the health uh, committee um, and since being elected speaker has been really um, a real fighter in bringing AEDs to more and more New Yorkers and we've been doing that um, since the beginning. We've, had, we've passed uh, multiple legislation. Today's legislation will bring that to a close. Parks will now have the ability to expand that program and it will expand in our Beating Hearts program which I thank my, my council colleagues for supporting. Uh, after this fiscal year we will have handed out over a thousand ADs to more and more New Yorkers. So I want to thank again Speaker Johnson, I want to thank Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Chris Hattori, I want to thank my own staff, uh, David Carr and Peter Spencer, and I hope my colleagues vote in favor of these two pieces of legislation. Thank you. Now I have Councilmember Rose, followed by Councilmember Barron. Thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. I'm excited to bring to you for a vote LU 420, 421, 422, 423, uh, with accompanying resos 986, 987, 988, and 989. And I want to thank Speaker Johnson for helping us get to this point. After four long years of community engagement and planning and planning and then more planning, the Bay Street rezoning is finally before us for a vote. This long-term plan for Stapleton and, Tra and Tompkinsville will transform them into neighborhoods that residents have been asking for, vibrant, diverse, walkable, and well-planned, with housing for a range of income levels with all the infrastructure that residents deserve. This has not been an easy process, but I pursued it willingly to address the pressing need for housing and to secure the public investments that are long deserved. Too many people are fearful that rising housing costs across the city will someday force them out of their longtime neighborhoods. These fears are real, and this plan addresses them. This project will allow for the construction of approximately 1,800 new apartments in the Bay Street rezoning area, with more than 450 permanently affordable units through mandatory inclusionary housing using MIH Options 1 and the Deep Affordability Option to ensure the local residents that face the most severe rent burdens are able to remain in the community. I have always said that we have to have the necessary infrastructure commitments before we move forward with any new development. I am happy to report that I have secured a package that is unprecedented for Staten Island. Again, I've been around long enough to tell you this is unprecedented and it will benefit all residents of the borough. This package includes a commitment to build a fully affordable housing on publicly owned property because my district is not a gated community. Rental assistance vouchers to help move 100 homeless families and individuals out of shelter and into affordable housing. Assistance for tenants facing harassment and for struggling homeowners who need to make critical repairs. Two new schools in Stapleton, one on our waterfront and one inland on Tompkins Avenue, 
12 acres of new waterfront open space that will include $75 million in amenities, playgrounds, basketball courts, dog runs, pickleball, and comfort <laughs> stations. A fully funded $75 million Tompkinsville Esplanade with safe pedestrian openings. Ma Madam Majority Leader, Councilmember Rose worked on this for four years, so I just would ask that she be allowed to finish her remarks today. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> with safe pedestrian-oriented spaces, a $49 million investment in pedestrian and roadway intersection improvements along the corridor to mitigate traffic and improve the areas around our Staten Island rail stations, $60 million in necessary sewer infrastructure work, a restored tap-in park with a working fountain and a renovated village hall with comfort stations, and finally, 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 the long-delayed rebuilding of the Cromwell Recreation Center $92 million project that has a target opening date of 2025, and I am eager to engage the community in the design and programming. This is planning and infrastructure on a scale we have never seen before, planning and infrastructure in the broadest and deepest sense. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for all of his support and, and listening to my, my rantings and his chief of staff, Jason Goldman, for their support in this process. The city council land use team, Raju Mann, Amy Levitin, John Douglas, Arthur Ha, um, Rosa Kelly, without their expertise and dedication to this project and answering all my myriad of texts and emails at all hours of the day and night, we would not be here this afternoon. I want to thank Chair Salamanca and Chair Moya I want to, and on my own staff side, I'd like to thank Christine Johnson, Issa Rogers, and Vince Grignani for their dedication to this project as well. I urge all my colleagues to vote yes on this application, and I want to thank again Speaker Johnson for your support during this process. Thank you, Chair, for giving me extra time. Congratulations, Councilmember Rose, on all that you have accomplished. Councilmember Barron. Thank you so much. I want to speak to my colleagues today about Intro 5B. I'm pleased and excited to have this before us today. Now, if you can recall your biology and your physiology lessons that you had, you know our body needs carbs for the fuel to get us the energy to do all the things that we're going to do. And if you continue to reflect on those lessons, you know that those carbs are processed and turned into sugars. And the problem comes when we have the excess sugars beyond what our body can process, which can lead to diabetes. And diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. And it is especially high among African Americans and Latinx. 29 million Americans have diabetes. And in addition to that, 86 million are pre-diabetes or on the cusp are developing diabetes, and without intervention, 15 to 30 percent of them will develop diabetes within five years. The American Diabetes Association says that, quote, the balance between how much insulin is in your body and the carbohydrates that you eat makes a difference in your blood glucose level. We know that a number of New York City residents have these chronic diseases that they struggle with, and the intent uh, behind Intro 5 is to assist New York City residents by providing them with information that reminds them to be mindful of the carbs that they're taking in so, as they don't, so that they don't exacerbate the situations that they may have. We know it's a very personal matter, and we know that it's different for each person, but we do want to make sure that they are mindful of that. We've taken precautions so that business owners will have a full year once they are notified that this is a requirement, that they will have a full year to be able to comply with the signage that will go up so that they are not penalized. And I want to thank my legislative director, Indigo Washington, Washington, because this was her idea to introduce this bill. She's very health conscious. And I want to thank the speaker for working with us on this, and as well as the mayor's office and the Department of Health. We had some real challenges. As you can see, this is number five. So it's been a long time coming, and I want to thank all of the staff that worked on getting this done. Thank you so much. Report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, intros 1513A through 
1535A, transgender and other individuals in city jails. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, preconsidered intro 1619, greenhouse gas emissions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, intro 5B, information on healthy eating. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 419 and Reso 982, Court Square. Coupled on general orders. LU 438 and Reso 983, American Brass. Coupled on general orders. LU 463 and Reso 984, Brook 150. Six. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations. Intro 1331B, NYCHA Overtime and Procurement. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Intros 1009A and 1042A, Defibrillators. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intro 1549, Seaver Way. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 410 and Reso 985 through LU 437, various applications from city planning. Uh, coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Torres. I vote aye, thank you. Rosenthal. I vote aye on all, thank you. Van Bramer. I vote aye on all. Adams. Congratulations to Council Members Chin and Rose. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye on all except uh, land use 420, 421, 422, 423, accompanying resos 986, 987, 988. 989 and intro 5B. I just want to bask in the fact that people are clapping for me. They never do that here. So thank you. Brannon. Aye at all. Cabrera. Matteo. Uh, no on land use 420, 421, 422, 423. Accompanying resos 986, 987, 988, 988. Quiet in the chamber. 989 and no on intro 5B. I and the rest. Chin. Congratulations to Council Member Rose. I vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, may I be allowed to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, uh, intro 1619, uh, the, the cleanup bill that we're doing today in relation to uh, Local Law 97. Uh, which was known as the Climate Mobilization Act. Of course, I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson and all of the staff that worked on this uh, you know, historic legislation. And today, we just want to make sure we get a lot of the technical things right, and whether that's making the advisory board more inclusive and not exclusive so that professional engineers and others with expertise needed uh, to help guard policy are included. Uh, we want to make sure that we can get this right, and I appreciate the opportunity today, Jeff Baker, Nicole Bede, everyone that was able to help us uh, just make sure we get all these technical fixes to ensure that this bill can be uh, the largest emissions reduction bill in the history of the city. So thank you very much. Thank you. Carnegie. Vote aye. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. I vote aye on all, and I want to congratulate all of my colleagues on all of the work that they put in on their rezonings. Uh, but I, I do have to abstain from land use call up 410, only because for the same reasons I'm supporting the climate emergency uh, rezo. Uh, I think that uh, green spaces in our city uh, have to be valued. Uh, we have to do more to uh, ensure that we're protecting uh, gardens across all five boroughs, and uh, we have to. <laughs> So Quiet is, in the this, chamber. This is not a criticism of the project. It, I think the project is great. It brings great affordable housing. It's more of a policy position, I think, that the administration has on building on community gardens and HPD spaces. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Congratulations to my colleagues. I vote aye on all. Joan I. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I want to speak up on intro 1623, and I want to thank Speaker Johnson for his support of this uh, intro, intro. There are currently 10,000 bodegas throughout New York City, and many are not given the proper ability to defend themselves or their customers from crime. 
Last year, 15-year-old Lissandro Jr. Guzman rushed into a bodega seeking safety from gang members who mistook him for a member of a rival gang. Jr. was then dragged from the bodega and viciously butchered with knives and machetes just minutes from his home. This bill would create a pilot program to reimburse small businesses for the purchasing and installation of panic buttons. The panic buttons would in instantly notify the police department of emergencies and alert pedestrians when activated. The significance is this bill will create safe havens in our communities and out throughout our neighborhoods. Panic buttons will allow store owners to immediately alert the police and community of a crime or potential of a crime, which will reduce crime and possibly save lives. It will allow small store owners the ability to install security systems to protect themselves, their customers, and our communities. It will help give justice to victims such as Junior and prevent victims in the future. We will never know if this panic button system could have prevented the murder of Junior, but we must all do what we can to prevent anything from this happening again, and I encourage all of my colleagues to be supportive of this initiative. With permission, I'd like to vote on all coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. And I vote aye. Gordenchik. Uh, with a nod to one of the great heroes of my youth, Tom Seaver, who's being rightfully honored today, I vote aye on all. Holden. I vote aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Congratulations, Debbie Rose. Um, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Council Girl. Ku. I will I, uh, especially by passing uh, intro 1549. I hope this will bring make good fortune. I will I on all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, Max. Yeah. <laughs> Council Member King. <laughs> Council Member King, while you were very well represented, we just need you to officially vote. Congratulations, Debbie Rose, and I vote I on all. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I vote aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. I vote aye, and I just want to shout out Zane Cowie from my district, one of the climate strikers who's been outside City Hall every Friday for many, many months, pushing us to really recognize what an emergency this is. Thank you, Zane, and everybody who was part of that movement. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Uh, I vote aye on all with congratulations to all my colleagues, in particular Councilmember Rose. Lewis. Congrats, Councilmember Rose. I vote aye on all. Maisel. Just want to quickly, uh, oh yes, let's let Councilmember Maisel yell yes. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I did not see her here at the beginning of the meeting when I gave my remarks uh, from communication from the speaker, but I really, again, now, now it's for the long haul. I want to congratulate, uh, again, she's not new because she's been here, but now it's official. I want to give a big congratulations to Council Member Farrah Lewis on her big victory last night. Congratulations, Farrah. Not many of us can say we've won two elections in one month and came to the stated meeting the next day. <laughs> so certainly congratulations to you. Miller. I vote aye. Moya. Aye and all. Perkins. Powers. Aye and all. Reynoso. Richards. Aye and all. Rivera. With congratulations to my colleagues and a hearty go Mets, as well as a special thank you to my interns, Kate, Hope, Jason, and Porter. Thank you. It's going to be a good day. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Aye. 
Rose. Um, permission to explain my vote. I just want to say um, thank you to Council Member um, Chin for being so courageous and not running away from a good fight. Um, congratulations on um, the passage of your land use issues, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Salamanca. I would like to congratulate Council Member Chin and Council Member Rose on your land use um, applications. Congratulations. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, with congratulations to my colleagues, and since everyone's wishing a certain sports team a lot of good luck, let's wish some luck to the New York Knicks as well. <laughs> let's get Kevin Durant. I vote aye on all. Ulrich. All right. Permission to explain my vote? Briefly. Permission granted. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I'm very uh, pleased to welcome the two uh, wonderful women in my life. My grandmother, Rosemary, is with us, and my daughter, Lily, is also here. <laughs> So uh, just two, just two of the, uh, I was very careful not to say the many wonderful women, I really shouldn't say that, but I meant I have a lot of wonderful women in my life, and these happen to be uh, the two of the most important, the most important ones. So uh, I want to um, uh, vote no on, give me that paper, hold on. I want to vote no on uh, intro 5B and I on all others, but um, I also want to uh, congratulate uh, Christine McLaughlin uh, I don't think in the 11 years that I've been here I ever got a newsletter done on time. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't delivered to my district. And I'm kind of worried now because I don't know what I'm going to do. She was always so gracious and helpful to me and my staff. She is one of the many great people that work for the City Council and, and for all of us. We would not be able to do our jobs uh, without uh, Christine McLaughlin and, and so many of the other good folks that work at 250 Broadway. So I'm very sad to see her go, but I'm very happy uh, because she, um, she deserves to have a good retirement and to enjoy and relax for a change and not have to chase after the 51 of us. So I love Christine McLaughlin and I wish her all the best and, um, and I want to congratulate Farah uh, also on her victory yesterday. It's great to have her. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, first, I, I just wish to rise to uh, congratulate our new colleague, uh, Councilmember Farrah Lewis. Um, as I said, when she was sworn in a few weeks ago, it was, uh, it was a great privilege for me uh, and, and my friend Chaim Deutsch was standing uh, on the streets in the pouring rain. We did it again yesterday, this time in the sun, although I was a little worried about the rain in the morning. Um, but she's, she's been incredible so far in her last few weeks, and I have great hopes uh, for, the, for the incredible unity that she's bringing to our neighborhood uh, that's uh, desperately needed. Um, I vote aye on all with the exception of uh, intro 5 on which I vote no and on introductions 1331, 1513, 1514, 1530, 1535, and 1619 on those uh, six items I respectfully abstain for the reasons I stated earlier at committee. Thank you very much Madam President. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 5B, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. And LUs 420 through 423 and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 44 affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. 
and LU 410 and Reso 985, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. Intros 1331B, 1513A, 1514A, 1530A, 1619, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. Thank you. We will now have introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? If, folks could, if folks could stay in the room, we have to maintain quorum until this resolution is voted on. Councilmember Ben Kalos. I'll make this quick. My Quiet in the Member. chamber. My name is Councilmember Ben Kalos. I believe in climate change. I believe that humans have caused climate change, and I believe that we have a climate emergency. We must activate across all sectors on a scale we haven't seen since World War II in order to prevent this, the sixth mass extinction on our planet. Today, we vote on Resolution 864 to join over 657 other countries, cities, towns, and villages worldwide to declare a climate emergency. We are standing up to climate change deniers, including Donald Trump, who's called climate change a hoax and withdrew our country from the Paris Climate Accord. Today, New York City will be the largest city in the world to declare a climate emergency. Take that, London. I want to thank Environmental Protection Chair Costa Constantinides for being a co-prime sponsor on this resolution and for scheduling a hearing within a month right after passing the groundbreaking Historic Climate Mobilization Act. Uh, thank you to a bunch of staff and all the advocates. I'm out of time. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We now have Councilmember Constantinides. You know, whether we want to call this a crisis, we need to call it an emergency. And today, this resolution makes a firm declaration that uh, we are in a climate emergency and that our actions need to be hastened and accelerated. Uh, I want to thank the speaker for allowing us to vote on the resolution today and for his strong environmental leadership as we passed the Climate Mobilization Act. And of course, I want to thank Ben Kalos, uh, the lead sponsor of the resolution. Uh, as we continue to act, uh, we need to continue to start using words and declaring things as they are. And we are most certainly in an emergency right now when it comes to climate and we have to treat it as such. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for your leadership. We will now read today's resolution into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on this resolution should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. Resolution 864A, an amended resolution declaring a climate emergency and calling for an immediate emergency mobilization to restore a safe climate. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. I will now read onto the record intro 1535A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. We will now move into general discussion. We will begin with Council Members King, followed by Drum, followed by Barron. Okay, we will now begin with Councilmember Drum, followed by Councilmember Barron. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I just want, would like to call my um, colleagues' attention to Intro 1621, a local law in relation to creating a nuclear disarmament and nuclear weapon-free zone advisory committee, and to also calling their attention to Resolution uh, 976, and it's a resolution calling on the New York City Controller to instruct the pension funds of public employees to divest from and avoid financial exposure to companies involved in the production and maintenance of nuclear weapons, reaffirming New York City as a nuclear weapons-free zone, and joining the ICANN City's appeal 
and calling on the United States to support and join the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. It's time for us to uh, end the proliferation of nuclear weapons and urge my colleagues to sign on to that legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Drum. Now, Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. I just want to call my colleagues' attention to Reso 975. As we know, this is Black History Month, and we are talking about the importance of history as a part of our culture and carrying positive messages. And what this resolution does, it calls on the FCC to enforce its regulations that it has against the broadcasting of profane, obscene, and violent lyrics and songs. It's prevalent and we are calling on the FCC to follow their own restrictions and place a ban on those stations that do not agree and follow with the regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. And just want to close with wishing, many of you have gotten a chance to know Crystal Hudson on my team, who is my chief operating officer, will be leaving today to work with uh, First Deputy uh, Public Advocate Jamani Williams, and she will be working with Jamani Williams moving forward as the first deputy public advocate for community engagement. Uh, public advocate Jamani Williams has done a phenomenal job at poaching the great talent of the city council, <laughs> and I'm so sad to see her leave, but she is going to go off to do extraordinary things, and I'm excited to see her growth and development and you will continue to hear wonderful and phenomenal things and wishing all of my colleagues a wonderful summer, an opportunity to regroup, to rest, perhaps go on a vacation if you're so lucky. And I thank you all That's for the incredible work that we have done um, with the leadership of Speaker Corey Johnson, who will now close us out. I hope everyone enjoys uh, the summer until we see you in July and has a safe, Pride weekend and a safe 4th of July. The stated meeting of June 26, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Happy summer.